And I'm here to tell a story about how artificial intelligence right now already is changing fundamentally the way we trade here in the fund. So I'm part of a team that trades a lot. Right? I'm sure you know the fund has received record inflows last uh, year, year and a half. Right? I'm in a team that trades those inflows. We have an active leader group making active investment decisions. Many of those decisions come to our team as well. Okay? So just through our team, this is not the NBIM number, this is our team. Right? We did 100 billion dollars, 2,000 million kroner. That's two thirds of the state budget. Right? So when we evaluated ourselves and asked like, simple questions, are we good? You know, are we really good in doing our jobs here? It was a little inconvenient to realize that, you know what? We're not. With numbers like these, you better be, and we were lagging. Two main challenges for us. One, like information overload, as I said, children, right? 9,000 companies. I mean, that's such a broad universe. It's impossible for me as a human being to keep up with all that information, right? It's a hyper-competitive financial market out there. How am I supposed to outperform in what I do in such a broad universe? Like, in all honesty, I'm, I'm just not smart enough to keep up, right? Challenge number two for us is speed, okay? We have an investment horizon in our dream of days and weeks, not months. Not years. If you want to own the best companies for the long run, Nikolai has a great book for you. Read it. But we're not it. Right? We're in the moving business here. We're not in the storage business. We crisscrossed the organizational chart with no respect and picked people we knew had skills in technical areas, in business areas, academics, practitioners, traders students, importantly, right, and asked, how can we improve the situation? Is there some sort of analysis we can run, other models we can build to help us manage our flows? And yes, there is. And here it is. We simply ask one question. Is this a good stock for my portfolio in the short term. Right? For those of you with a technical background, you will quickly realize this is a decision tree. Right? And it works simply by lifting up every stock I have in my portfolio, drop it in at the top, right? and ask a series of yes, no, left, right questions. Right? Coming down to the bottom, there's a score, and you get a feel for the stock. What sort of questions do you ask? Well, classical investment management questions. Valuation, is this a value company, is it a growth company? What about margins? Are they improving, are they deteriorating? How about sales? Is it going better now? Is it compared to its own history, compared to peers? All these sort of call them classical fundamental questions. Right? And then we also ask, let's call it technical question, trader question. Right? How is the price going? Is it volatile? Is it trending? Is it stable? What about volume? Is the stock trading a lot now? Is it trading a little now? Has there been some sort of event? Is there something here we can learn from the trading pattern of the stock? Right? Combining right? fundamental, technical questions. And that gives us a set of scores. Right? The good ones are green. The bad ones are red. Job done, make money, easy, right? Maybe not. Because, and, and this is an important point, I believe. If you have a great skill set in, uh, in AI and machine learning, you can build predictions machines like this. Right? You can get these predictions in such a powerful way. But if your skill set is in the, call it, business domain, right? If you're a problem solver, if you're like a developer of, of the, improving the ways we work, 
AI and machine learning can be a tremendous tool for you as well. Right? Because you can blend now, right? When you find these opportunities when the technical and the non-technical, right? when you can blend these, that's truly where the value is. For us, we spend even more time there than on the technical side. We do two things. One, like I mentioned the inflow, right? The tremendous amounts of, of cash coming in. Right? What's the mission there? Well, it's basically buy a little bit of everything. And when you have such broad programs, you know, well, I will, I will be buying some green stocks and I will be buying some red stocks. And simply by taking an existing process, which we understand well, and then enriching it okay, with the information from the AI predictions. We do the green stuff a little earlier and we do the red stuff a little later. Quite simple, right? Take a little bit of risk, prioritizing which names to buy early and which names to do later. And that has generated meaningful PL for us. It's been very low risk. The second use case is where we start doing something new. Something we haven't done before, either because of analytical capacity or because of ideas that has not really materialized. But here we look at one of the key challenges in the fund. We're such a big investor, so when we go out in the market, we push prices. If we buy too fast, we push the price up. If we sell too hard, we push the price down. It's a, mag it's a significant cost for us. When we have predictions, right? You have the green stuff and the red stuff. By inverse, you also have the stuff in the middle, right? That's not crucial. You can be patient there. We can slow down. Many institutions, many funds, many players, hedge funds, will use AI and machine learning to speed up, right? We use it to slow down, right? I don't want to play that speed game. I don't want to play their game. I want to play our game, when we start with our needs, our characteristics, what makes sense for us. This makes perfect sense for us, right? Slowing down, reducing market impact, predictions build patience. I'll leave you with this one. There's a tremendous opportunity here for all of us in this room, in our careers, for me and mine, for you, in yours, right? to learn so much. AI can really uncover like, deep truths of what's driving the market in a much more granular and effective way than before. Right? And when we learn, we share, we focus really hard on our learning and sharing culture here in NBIM. Right? Get that flywheel spinning. I learn, I share, I share my data, I share my code, I share my tools. You can build on my stuff, I can build on your stuff. That's when we get this positive feedback loop of learning and sharing. And for anything where AI is involved, I truly believe right, that this will totally accelerate uh, all our careers, no matter what. Is this making sense? All right, very good. Happy to chat with you afterwards. Um, and I'll leave the word back to you. Thank you.